The past few months we've been experimenting with hydrogen a lot, but we weren't satisfied. The amounts of hydrogen were not what we wanted and therefore we started searching for a way to make bigger amounts of hydrogen. Today we will talk about the deadly fight between atoms and molecules that will result in much more hydrogen and therefore bigger booms. Welcome to Cube Chemistry, where we will discuss all the elements of the periodic table and also do experiments. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Today we will talk about the redox reaction between lye and aluminum. So, in order to get more hydrogen to do some cool experiments, I decided to go for a redox reaction this time. Now what is that? And can I please leave the video yet since I didn't came here for a lecture? Well, before you leave, let me try to explain what a redox reaction is by using the following analogy. A boxing match. In the right corner we have sodium hydroxide, but you'll find them in the stores under the name lye. And in the left corner we got your favorite friend that carries all your soda to wherever you want. Please welcome aluminum, or as we call him, Al. So, before we let these two gentlemen fight it out like the molecules and atoms that they are, why these two substances? Well, in order to understand that, let's talk some more about reduction and oxidation. In the redox reaction, reduction is gaining electrons. The scientist that thought this was a good idea to name it reduction should have been redox themselves. Yes, it is logical, but annoying for everyone that doesn't have a chemistry degree. And oxidation is losing electrons in a chemical reaction. So in this case, we let our two champions fight. One will lose electrons and the other one will gain them. So place your bets. Aluminum or L, the attacking force, full of energy and determined to win by using its power, electrons. Sodium hydroxide or lye, the resilient power that absorbs the punches and turns them into strength, like the master of defense. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to crumble! In the first round, L starts with powerful blows, each punch transferring some of its energy, electrons, but with every attack he loses a bit of his own strength. In the second round, Lai absorbs the energy from each punch, growing stronger with every hit that he takes and begins to take control of the match. In the final round, L is by now exhausted. His energy electrons have been transferred. Lai, now strengthened by the energy he has absorbed, remains strong. And boom, there you go. Oh no, wait. This was just a failure from my side, forgetting to open the can with soda and accidentally blowing it up. So, what happened here? Well, I was being an idiot. When you do this experiment, you will destroy the integrity of the aluminum can. However, before the video, I've shaken the can so much that the carbonization inside started to build. So when the aluminum was eaten up by the sodium hydroxide, the pressure from inside the can broke what was left of the can. So let's try this again. Yeah, that's it. You can see the poor aluminum has been beaten. Game over. So, that's it. Aluminum was beaten, or in real life, swallowed by the sodium hydroxide. The aluminum gave its electrons and therefore connected together with the sodium hydroxide. The final result, sodium aluminate. And yes, my precious hydrogen. Sodium hydroxide is corrosive and can cause skin and eye irritation when working with it. It is important to wear protective gloves, goggles and clothing. When working with pure hydrogen gas, make sure to be careful. I'm doing these experiments at my own risk. Do not try them at home. So, now that we know how we can use this redox reaction to get amounts of hydrogen, let's simplify things and catch the hydrogen. For this experiment, I used a few grams of sodium hydroxide that I dissolved in normal tap water. Now, when doing this, a lot of energy will be released, causing the solution to warm up. I use specialized borosilicate glass that can stand high temperatures. After the sodium hydroxide is completely dissolved in the water, in order to do the same thing we did earlier with the poor aluminum can, we now use aluminum foil. 
Why? Because it's easier and the tin cans in the Netherlands have bottle deposit on them. So I was literally redoxing my money earlier on. When throwing the aluminum foil into the now liquid sodium hydroxide, you will see similar bubbles as before. And that is the hydrogen we want. I used my vacuum filter Elemeyer flask to make hydrogen for three experiments. One, explode a bunch of hydrogen soap bubbles in a plastic tub. Two, explode some hydrogen bubbles on my hand. And three, last but not least, to celebrate 250 subscribers, we may or may not be there yet, ignite a small hydrogen balloon. In order to get a nice tub full of hydrogen filled bubbles, I now connect the Elemeyer flask to a rubber tube that I put in the plastic tub that I filled with tap water and soap. After all is connected, I will put in the chunks of aluminum foil that will immediately start to react. I'll then seal the Elemeyer flask from above. I let the first bubbles come out as they will be filled with regular air and after the first 20 bubbles or so you will really see the reaction picking up speed. The hose will start to generate a lot of bubbles but the Elemeyer flask will also start to heat up pretty fast. Again I'm doing this inside special borosilicate glass as normal glass could shatter because of that quick temperature increase. After a while we have a beautiful tub full of explosive bubbles so Time to ignite! So time to stick my neck, I mean hand out. I do the same thing as before, but this time I scoop out a bunch of those bubbles and put them on my bare hand. Yes! Let's ignite! Since the only thing that is ignited is the hydrogen, you won't be able to feel anything. But like I mentioned before, don't try this at home. So, time to celebrate the 250 subscribers we currently have. First of all, thank you for taking the time to watch the videos that we make. My wife and I put a lot of time in them and we have a lot of fun making these videos. Seeing the amount of subscribers get higher and watching the comments and views go up makes us even more motivated to provide you with the best content that we can create. So, to celebrate that, we've decided to fill a small water balloon with hydrogen. Yes, it is very small, but the boom is much better than the magnesium from last time. As you can see, the pressure in the Elemeyer flask is building enough to fill up the small balloon. So, before we ignite, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you think we missed anything, let us know in the comments. And if you liked this video and want to see more, make sure to subscribe. And now, without further ado, 